Welcome back. This, this will be our third and last lecture on the chaotic pendulum. And it, really, it's not a lecture. It's just a demonstration of the, an alternative problem. For those of you who have done the simple pendulum or just want to be different from your classmates, you can do the double pendulum instead. Okay? And it's easier uh, in that it's simpler. Okay? So here's the double pendulum. It's just two bobs with masses connected with several two lengths, L1 and L2. And there's no external driving force. Uh, there's no friction here. It would just given it as a simple system. It's hard to believe that this would be chaotic. And what you'll see here in this photograph is actually a double pendulum made by one of the students in class out of aluminum. The student was a mechanic before he became a physics major. And he got so interested in this and didn't quite believe it that he actually uh, made this, and we just took this picture. We can give you a demo, but we'll give you a computer demo instead. Okay, so this is what we have. We have two pendula, no small angle approximation. Most textbooks that cover this have a small angle approximation, and they, and they miss the chaotic behavior. They miss the uh, really interesting parts of it. Okay, uh, Coupling here, the coupling between the two pendula serve the same purpose as that external driving force. They give you that extra degree of freedom that you need in order to have chaos. And in this case, you know, one is pushing the other at a, a frequency corresponding to the other pendulum so that it, it's not a simple system for any one pendulum, any one bob. It's pretty complicated. If you do the small angle approximation, then you tend to have two basic modes, which you know, one mode where the pendulum are in phase, another mode where they are out of phase. When you do the complete system, then you get a much more complicated, more interesting behavior. So how do you analyze this system? The easiest way to analyze it is with Lagrangian mechanics. And it's not very hard to write down the Lagrangian for the system. The Lagrangian, L, is just the kinetic energy minus the potential energy. The kinetic energy is, of course, just mv squared for each mass. You know, so you have, but you have several terms that come in because uh, the motion of one affects the motion of the other. And then you have potential energy, which is an mg times the height. So that's pretty much easy. So you look at the terms here. The terms of the g are the potential energy. So it's the masses from you know height of L1 and mass 2 from the height of L2. So that's pretty simple. The kinetic energy is coupled. Okay? So you get theta 1 motion from both, theta 2 motion, and then you get this theta 1 dot theta 2 motion and some cosine of the angle between them because uh, when you measure the velocity with respect to a fixed point, both thetas come in. So Lagrangian is not very hard to write down. The equations of motion given in equations 2 and 3 here, two of them, because it's theta 1 and theta 2. The equations of motion are not that hard, but you have to be very careful. It's easy to make mistakes. And they can be written in various forms and simplified. So these are the two equations. Okay? So for those of you who want an alternative problem, these are the equations of motion. You see that they're second order in theta 1 and theta 2. And there's two coupled equations, which is interesting. So now you can again use RK4, and you can again use the techniques. But now you have to extend the space to have two second-order equations. And that's the equivalent of four first-order equations. Okay? So it's a good example of that as well. Theta 1 double dot second order, theta 2 double dot second order. Then we have uh, no time dependence. So it's not a time dependent equation, but it's nonlinear. We have theta squared, theta dot squared makes it nonlinear. And we have cosine of theta 1, theta 2 sine, which also makes it nonlinear. Sine's here. So it's more nonlinear than the previous equation, but without the extra coupling. Okay. What happens? Well, you can solve the system. Here, we're looking at the bifurcation diagram. Okay. So we'll show you in a, motion, in a moment a demo of what the behavior looks like. But if you, again, just plot up the instantaneous angular velocity of something, here of the lower pendulum, usually at the instant it goes through zero at the bottom versus, in this case, the mass of the upper pendulum. As I said before, it's versus the parameter. Any parameter in the system works. 
It's just the mass of the upper pendulum. And you see this beautiful, intricate bifurcation diagram. And this corresponds to what? Well, let's look at a window here. One, two. At the window, you see, ah, the system is simple, and there's only three possible frequencies. As the mass gets very large, it tends, mass of the upper pendulum, as it approaches infinity, it tends to be just a simple pendulum with just the mass doesn't move on the top. So that's getting simpler. But you see all the frequencies here. You get some very complicated behavior. So now, let's look at what this looks like. Okay. So we can hide this and say, OK, if we have small oscillations, we tend to get very simple motion. Okay. So here we see a simulation. So this is a student's homework. I don't know where the students get all the time to do this, but you know the students love to make Pavre mo movies. So this is a movie of small oscillation when the two pendulum are in phase. And you see it's like one pendulum moving just in phase. Okay, Very nice. Then if the two pendulum are moving opposite phase, you start off that way, that's what it looks like. You know, it's just like small oscillations. This is just what you find in the textbooks. What you don't find in the textbook, of course, is when the oscillation is larger, then the motion can become chaotic. There's no driving force here. You think the system is dead, and then it picks up again. It doesn't want to die. There's a lot of energy pumped into that system, and it keeps going. So. Maybe you'll see a live demonstration of this at some point as well in your class. If not, try to reproduce this. So get to the lab. Do want the single pendulum with a driving force and friction, or the double pendulum. No friction, no driving force. Enjoy your chaotic system. Bye-bye. Well, just to show you that it's not all simulated science, here we have that actual aluminum double pendulum that we spoke about in the office hour. And we'll do a demonstration of it. And we'll try to show you at least the three types of motion that we talked about and showed you simulations of. So take a close look at it. It's nothing very complicated. This is just a big, heavy base. Uh, this is a long pendulum, a lot of mass. Here's a short pendulum with a little mass. So obviously, the two are coupled together in a way that the heavy the energy, the inertia of the upper mass gets transferred to the lower one. And the lower one can undergo then some significant oscillations uh, with just getting the energy left in the top. It's braced rather tightly to the table because when a system like this goes through one frequency to another, that is when it jumps between frequencies, that's a change in theta or double dot, theta double dot very large, and it's a very large torque. So. Let's show you this now to start with. Okay. So here we have, this will be a small annual oscillation, the symmetric mode, and it's just a pendulum moving. Both obviously together, not very interesting. It's just the frequency corresponding to the slow motion of the very long pendulum. If we start off with an asymmetric mode like this, it's a higher frequency corresponding to the asymmetric motion, where they, they oppose each other. okay, And those are the two dominant modes, but only the two dominant modes for small oscillations. For large oscillations, you get many more modes. You get much more complicated behavior. So here, for example, we'll give you a, a demonstration. I'll start it over the top, and I'll, with the top one, small pendulum folded in. And you may hear some banging, which is unfortunate, but you know it's mechanical. And that's losing energy. So this obviously has friction, but we'll go. And there you can see, you can hear the noise. You can see there's one mode. The bottom pendulum is going around quite a bit. The top pendulum has stopped going around. And the bottom pendulum just seems to like to go around even when you think it's dead, like now. Maybe it is dead. It'll keep going around. So let me give you another demonstration of that. I can start it the other way. Uh, with, the, with at the top spinning. And that looks like one mode, but there's coupling in there, so you're getting some other mode coming in, like a trapeze artist, and they're the top one spinning like crazy. 
So there's no energy being poured into this, and it's losing energy with friction. So, double pendulum, you have the Lagrangian, you can compute these modes, you can see if you can reproduce this behavior. Fascinating system. Enjoy it.